I am going to be focusing on Dixie Bell's six types or colors of gilding wax. And I've put together some example little placards with some Would You Bend molding to help highlight this product. I basically took a medallion and cut it into fours and glued them to these wood blocks. I want to focus on applying Dixie Bell's gilding wax to these designs and just showcase the gilding wax and how nice they look and how easy they go on and you know, I think it'll be a good resource for others to use. So that's that's our goal tonight. So let me move these out of the way and we're just going to basically take each gilding wax and see how it looks on vintage duck egg and you'll see how the product works and looks really well and I'm just making sure I thought I had everything out but I must have missed a way to open it you could probably use a, a good flathead screwdriver or one of these paint uh, can openers all right so first thing I'm going to do is just open this up. It's always a good thing to just take a quick look at the, the directions on the side as you read through a product and make sure that you're not missing any critical steps. For me, basically, I just put, I heated these wood you bins up, glued them on, chalk painted them, did a really light coat of top coat so they were all set. By the way, I sometimes I'll put the gilding wax on before a top coat. That's but not not always not always standard, I guess. But it does work. Now you can use your finger, or I sometimes I'll use my brush because the finger may not get in all the spots. There's multiple ways to apply it, but the silver one is what we'll do first. I'm just going to use a craft brush. And the size is totally up to you, how much, how large your piece is. One of the reasons why I like the brush is it does give me a little bit more control on exactly where I put that. And you can cover the whole piece or you can just hit like this. You can just hit the highlight. I'm going to tell you right off the bat that the gilding wax is oil based and the mousse is water based. So you, if you want something that's going to be super um, attaching to the piece and very, um, very permanent from a standpoint of durability, uh, I would say the gilding wax is more versatile from a standpoint of it's just going to stick really hard and do a great job. The mousse, on the other hand, is water-based, can be wiped off quite easily uh, until it's totally cured or top coated for example and they both have their place uh, but I think you'll find that the gilding wax the new and I'm showcasing the new gilding wax that came out not too long ago um, is really really great product and if you're not too worried about um, for example, if I go to try and wipe this off, it's not really going to go anywhere. You'll you can use your finger and you can push it around, but I cannot take a wet rag right now and wipe this off. So if you'd like to use something that is very metallic-y and you'd like to wipe it off, then I would go with the mousse. Even though this is top coated, it's really designed to stick and stay on there. So it's great for hardware and other things like that. So I'm taking my time just really putting this purposefully where I want it. Remembering, of course, that I can just skim the surface. But look how lovely that looks. Now notice I did not do the sides. For this situation, I can come back and even highlight some of the edges. And again, you could use your finger for this. I just picked a fairly small, maybe one eighth quarter inch size brush. 
So like you see, if I right now, if I'm if I rub this, it's not really going we're not really going anywhere. That would not be the case with the gemstone noose. And um, I'm I'm just a huge fan of the gilding waxes, so I'm glad to showcase this product tonight. Okay, so let's move on to black. I've not used the black yet. So we're going to do the same thing we did with silver, but we're going to do it with black. Okay. Now the black has a little bit of a metallic nature to it, so it's going to work. It's just not going to be as vibrant. Almost um, a little bit like I'm treating it a little bit more like a, a wax, I guess. Now, if you'll see the directions, it says let the gilding wax dry for four hours. Lightly buff after 12 hours to produce a beautiful gilded finish. So if you're not seeing the full luster of the color, give it some time to, to dry and then come back with the rag and give it a little bit of a buff. I'm using my fingers right now just to wipe off. What, it, what, you'll find, what I'm finding on this one is that the, the black is much softer, so it's going on a little bit, it's moving around a lot freer. So I'm using uh, some rags to just kind of so, um, remove some excess. So you just have to get to know it. But the black is, uh, all of them are very potent, so it's not taking a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get as much off my brush onto the uh, quarter pendant here. And if you're joining late, this is a Would You Bend mold that you can get on Dixie Bell's website. And I basically heated up the mold and cut it into fourths. And I, so th these are really great if you, if you like to teach classes or practice. All right, so that's black. Still a nice classic look. And I will definitely be looking forward to see how the luster comes out when I buff it later on. And I might find that in some cases I might need a little bit more in some places, but I'm gonna see how, how it dries and works out. This one seems to want me to use the black. Feels like it needs to use a little bit more of a brush to help fade it. So I've, it's not super filled in, but I think the black's really a cool look too. So now we're going to switch over to zinc. And we're gonna give that a try. Same idea where I'm going to, this one feels a lot like the black does. Very creamy, soft, this one is a little bit cooler temperature uh, on the color wheel than the black is. So if I had my choice and I only had these two, I would probably go with zinc on vintage duck egg because it has that cool temperature nature. And black feel, feels a little bit more of a rugged dark. And rugged I mean just not as... Um, doesn't complement the vintage duck egg as well as zinc does. It almost feels, and it could be the lighting in my space, but it almost feels purple. I may not be describing that right, but I'm just giving you my play-by-play, -play. <laughs> uh, the way that's, that's working. Okay. That is zinc. So just to give you a comparison, black is on the right and zinc is on the left. The zinc seems to have a little bit of a shinier, but again, neither one of them have dried and, and, and buffed. 
you can see how these containers will last you forever unless you just start cranking through them it'll take you a long time to really get through these colors all right next one is bronze Just putting a little bit on the ends. I have so, there's so much. Um, it doesn't take much on your brush. It goes such a long way. So doing a demonstration like this, I'm barely using the product. There's still, a, so yeah, I'm just, right now I'm just almost doing like a, I like to demonstrate shading. It's almost like I'm shading. I'm just putting, color down and then I'm coming back I'm gonna come back with another brush and I'll do the fading I could do it with this brush but I'm just liking how that techniques working so just putting it on there and then I'm gonna use this brush kind of like my blending brush just to fade that fade that out there is a little bit of the other colors in there but that's okay not much so if that's not working I either don't have enough color or we'll just keep going with this so far each one of these colors feels a little different so you're gonna to have to maybe do a little bit of practice run before you charge in on your project maybe at least that's what I recommend if not just go easy on it to start with because you might have just finished with one color and thought oh let's go smooth you just have a little bit different consistencies all right I'm really liking that. If you know color theory, they, this color is they're opposite of each other, so they're they're complements, and that really makes this combination work. I love vintage duck eggs, so I wanted to pick a color I, I used a lot. This is copper now. We just finished with bronze. Copper is going to be even um, redder and pop off this vintage duck egg really well this is so therapeutic it's fun to see these colors these gilding waxes don't get me wrong I I, I, I still like um, Dixie Bell's older gilding wax consistency but this is beyond better uh, in other words there's times where I, I do like a, a, a more firmer consistency and this is really creamy but it's just taking a little bit. Of, it's just takes some getting used to if you're used to the old gilding wax. But this is a great product. Look how easy this is to paint on there. I cannot really do this detail, this kind of level of detail and getting into the design with my fingers. Or So this is really working well. Just get you some crap brushes if you want to try getting into this kind of detail about so I want to say two Saturdays ago I went live with Dixie Bell and I painted my powder room vanity with gilding wax and that worked out really well so right now I'm just kind of feathering this all out just so those let me show you the difference between the color on the right is bronze and the color on the left is copper see how well that red works just works so well so i'm a huge fan of copper for sure all right so this is my favorite gold is my favorite all day uh, i've used a decent amount of it it's just um just love it so let's get back so let's get in there to gold but i will tell you for vintage duck egg it's going to be a tight competition. You guys have to tell me what you like better between copper and gold. So let's compare in just a minute, all right? But I just love the gold. Uh, one reason that I love the gold is it oftentimes goes with a lot of my hardware. Uh, I would say oftentimes what I'll even do is I'll clean the hardware on my pieces and I'll work my metallics to that. So you might even, that might be a great place for you to mix colors so that if you wanted to match your hardware, like if it polished up and it was a bronze, well, 
I wouldn't know if I'd put gold with bronze. So you, you sometimes it's good to, if you like to clean your hardware, so find that out before you start putting metallics on your piece. Or if you're doing something different. Yeah, some more to get in. And we're almost done here. It's so fantastic. If you haven't used the gilding waxes, you need to get at least one or two of colors that you feel like you most likely will use and then go from there. I'm just going to give it, give it a quick, just kind of spread some of that around. Remember, it's not going to go far. Once you put it on there, it's pretty much good to go. So on the left is gold and on the right is copper. Isn't that great? You know what I didn't do on these? I forgot. I did it on the first one is I put a little bit of touch of gold across the top. Just to give it a little highlight. A little extra pizzazz. I'll have to go back and do that on the others. This is where you could use your finger to do that, but I will tell you that usually when I Put it on my finger. I like to wipe it off because, again, you don't, you want to be careful around the edges because it'll just once you get it on there, it's on there. So a little touch like that sometimes is, gives a little extra. You could have fun and you could paint maybe all the way around, but the, these are uh, these are meant to showcase the products, and that's only reason I put these things together. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of how well these colors work. And let's see if we can just review them with you. Silver, black, zinc, copper, gold, and bronze. Hopefully you have a favorite there. So that's my demonstration tonight. I really wanted to showcase these products. I hope that you have a chance to get you some of that and uh, try it out. But thanks for joining me tonight. I'm very glad to see a lot of you watching, doing some more with these products here in the near future. So feel free to visit my website, bowtietreasures.com. You can see um, other links there that, and things that would benefit you if you like to do furniture art. But I think that's it for tonight. Hope that helps, and you guys have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much for tuning in.